I believe in using the right tool for the right job, and both Notion and Obsidian excel at what they do, but they're completely different. While you can use Notion-like features in Obsidian and vice versa, it doesn't mean you always should, as they're built for different things, and it all depends on what you want to get out of it. I'm going to compare Notion and Obsidian in these categories, and I'm going to finish up with what I think each software is best at, and why I use both. And let's start off with structure. Notion embraces folders. It's not a question of whether you want something to go in a folder, but rather which folder. In Obsidian, you could just start typing and think about it later. And you don't have to use a folder, you can just link it to another note or tag it. You can also do a hierarchical folder system if you so choose, but Obsidian doesn't force you into it. You can have as many or as little folders as you'd like. But there's nothing wrong with having folders, it all depends on what you want to use Notion for. If you want to use it for tasks where you know exactly where everything should go, then folders are great. But if you're using it as a knowledge management system, you'll soon find folders to be very limiting and restrictive. I enjoy having folders in Notion and as little folders as possible in Obsidian because I use both tools for different tasks, and I'm going to get to that in the later parts of this video. While on the topic of structure, unlike Obsidian, Notion encourages you to use it in their way. This can actually be seen as either a plus or a negative depending on the user, as a lot of people like restrictive and streamlined options. Notion also encourages you to place a lot of thought on how you're going to structure and visually present your data. It's more of a top-down approach, whereas Obsidian is more of a bottom-up approach. Notion also puts a big emphasis on using templates, but these templates aren't so much a time-saving automation tool, but rather elaborate pages to visually display information. These are so popular, in fact, that many people make templates of all sorts and sell them. Obsidian also has many ways of using templates, but their focus is more on automation and time-saving. But now let's go over discoverability. Obsidian has multiple ways in which you can discover your notes. It has folders and system-wide search, just like Notion, but it also has tags, links, and most importantly for me, the graph view. And I don't just mean the vault-wide graph view that everyone on Obsidian's subreddit is so obsessed about, but rather the local graph view. This is a small localized graph based on what note you're in, so that you can immediately see which links are coming into and out of that note. I can't tell you how many notes I find myself rediscovering and most importantly using because of simply having the local graph view on at all times. And this goes back to the importance of what you use it for, because if you're using Notion to manage a project, either alone or with a team, having a graph view, tags and bidirectional linking is probably not your biggest concern. But if you're managing your knowledge, it makes a big difference. Another important factor is flexibility, and very few apps are as flexible as Obsidian. You can make your Obsidian Vault as complex or as simple as you want it to be. You don't have to make use of anything, not even folders. Not only that, but there's hundreds of different Vault themes as well, so you can have it just the way you like it. And perhaps the best thing about Obsidian is the community plugins. The community is constantly coming up with amazing plugins that add a ton of functionality to your Vault. For instance, as you know, AI is a hot topic right now, and many apps are releasing their own flavor of AI implementation. But not many apps provide you with a way to interact straight with OpenAI with no middleman involved. If you want to use AI in Notion, you're looking at adding $10 a month to your plan. But with Obsidian, you can interact directly with OpenAI's API with no middlemen involved, which not only gets you the latest features and full control over the API, but at a fraction of the cost. I've been using GPT 3.5 in my vault, and I make around 30 requests a day, and it's costing me less than a dollar a month. And this is just one of the hundreds of useful plugins in Obsidian. All right, let's not talk about collaboration, and Notion takes the win here without a doubt. It's really easy to work with multiple people in the same workspace, other users can leave comments, and there's a lot of features that make it a joy to use. And the same goes for sharing. If I want to share a document in Obsidian, there's no easy way to do that, whereas with Notion, you just type someone's email and they can immediately see it. But being this good at collaboration is a double-edged sword, because it comes with drawbacks. For starters, the software can only be this good at collaboration if the notes are not local. You need to make an account with Notion to use it because your Notion notes are not on your computer, they're in their servers, and this has some major disadvantages. And the first is future-proofness. Your Obsidian notes are just markdown files that live in your system. This means that your notes are not tied to Obsidian, they're not held hostage by another company. If one day you choose to not use Obsidian, the notes are already in your possession in a widely accepted format. And while yes, you can always export your notes from Notion, you'll quickly find that it's not an easy process. And this also means that you can't just have a backup task of your Notion files, as you need to manually go into the settings and request an export of your notes. If you want to future-proof your career, one of the best ways you can do that is by investing in learning, which is where my sponsor Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant is the go-to platform for learning maths and sciences in an interactive way. Brilliant storytelling makes even the most abstract ideas relatable, which is what makes STEM topics actually stick. Learning a little every day is a difficult habit to stick to, but it makes a huge impact, and no service makes that easier than Brilliant. 
Their visual hands-on approach is such an effective and engaging way to learn that it makes building a daily learning habit not only easy, but fun as well. And because Brilliant has thousands of lessons from AI to data science with exclusive new content added monthly, there's always something new to learn. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash from Sergio and the first 200 people that sign up get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Another key difference, and this one is often overlooked, is speed and responsiveness. The web is full of users complaining about this for Notion. Notion is in the cloud, so you're never going to have the speed and responsiveness of a local app. This is because you're dependent both on their servers and your internet connection. And because Obsidian runs locally, neither of those are a concern. My vault has multiple thousands of nodes, roughly 30 gigs worth of media, and it's still as fast as it was over two years ago when I started using Obsidian. Of course, the better your hardware, the better it will likely run, but that's really only a concern for enormous vaults. And then we have the topic of privacy. With Obsidian, your nodes are truly yours. When you use Notion, you don't own those nodes. They live in Notion servers. And although I care a whole lot more about the privacy of my personal thoughts and knowledge management than the stuff I use Notion for, I don't think anyone dislikes privacy. And in a world where we're heading towards the proverbial you'll own nothing and be happy, it's certainly something to keep in mind. There is one catch with your notes being local as they are with Obsidian. If you want to sync them across multiple devices, you have to use your own sync solution such as iCloud, Google Drive, or others. Obsidian does offer it as a service, but it's a little overpriced. This is not a concern with Notion as your notes live in Notion servers, so they're always in sync. All you gotta do is log in with your Notion account. But while this may seem like a disadvantage, it gives you every bit of control over file versioning and backups. Let's start with versioning. Notion gives you file versioning for 7, 30, or 90 days depending on your plan. If you want unlimited file versioning, you have to have an enterprise plan. With Obsidian, that's a completely different story. My vault lives on my NAS, which means I get to set the rules based on my storage capacity. And because most Obsidian vaults are so light and storage is so cheap, it's very easy to have your own unlimited file versioning system in place. And this has saved me more times than I can count. And the same can be said for backups. You can have as robust of a backup system as you want. My vault gets automatically backed up to my NAS with every single change I make, and my NAS gets backed up every single night to different locations. You don't need to have this robust of a backup system, and I explored much simpler options in my backups video, but the point here is that you can if you want. Whereas Notion backs up your notes to the cloud, and if you want those notes in your possession, you need to request an export for them in the format that you want. There are options to have automatic backups through the API, but they're far from ideal. Alright, so what is Obsidian best for? In my opinion, it's better suited for personal knowledge management, or second brain as people like to call it. It has better discoverability with bidirectional linking, tags, etc., as well as features like the graph view. It's infinitely more private than Notion, and it's as future-proof as it gets, which is really important for this use case. Your personal knowledge is not a project with a deadline, you likely want it to go on and expand forever, and knowing that your hard work is as future-proof as it can be is really important. And as the name implies, personal knowledge management is personal, so the collaboration features that Obsidian lacks aren't that big of a problem. On the other hand, I think Notion is best for project and task management as well as collaboration of any kind. Notion lets you have multiple people collaborating in one workspace with awesome features like leaving comments and third-party app support. It integrates seamlessly with Slack and Google Drive, which makes it great for small teams. And even if I look at it from a personal perspective, I would still rather use Notion for managing projects, especially if those projects rely heavily on databases. So let's go over why I use both. I've been using Obsidian for over two years now, and it's my personal knowledge management app. It's where I take my notes, where I journal, it's a place where I think. Whereas Notion is a place where I work. I work with a team in my job and we use Notion to collaborate. As much as I love Obsidian, it's nowhere near Notion in the team space. And right now, this channel just consists of me and my editor. But if one day we expand the team, Notion is definitely where we will be expanding to. Lastly, I just want to say that while Notion is a larger and more established company, Obsidian currently has been growing exponentially and has around a million users. And while that's considerably less than Notion's 30 million users, Obsidian can no longer be considered a super niche product. Not just that, but Obsidian has no venture capitalist to answer to. There's no outside pressure to reach X amount of users or certain revenue targets, which means that they can stay true to their core principles, which is something not a lot of companies can say. Normally this comes with a catch, which is that if there's no sustainable monetization model, the developers are less likely to continue developing, but that's simply not the case with Obsidian. Obsidian is free, but it does have paid options. It has the sync feature, which, although a bit pricey, is a nice quality of life improvement for the users and a way to help the team. There's also Obsidian Publish and Obsidian for Teams, as well as a support tier. So it's not like it's a GitHub project strapped for cash. Which is great because as the users, we obviously want the product to continue to succeed. Overall, I think the choice should be based on what your use case is rather than the app itself. Am I biased? Yeah, probably. 
but they're both solid options so long as you understand that they serve different purposes. If you do decide that you want to use Obsidian, I have an extensive playlist taking you from the very basics to advanced. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.